refuge here is about 118,000 acres. It was established in 1985 um, for the purpose of protecting and managing uh, semi-desert grasslands as well as endangered species with the emphasis on the masked bobwhite quail. It's a, a highly endangered bird. Uh, we have the captive flock that we have on refuge com is comprised of about 99% of the entire species. It's just a beautiful, unique place removed from the city, uh, wide open public land for anybody to visit. Because, we had, because this was an old ranch, there is a, a big network of roads for people to travel. They are all public roads. Um, we have a large hunt program in conjunction with Arizona Game and Fish, and so a lot of hunters come down here. But also, it's a, a very popular bird watching uh, refuge. The Aravaca Cienega is probably the hot spot for the refuge. Um, because it has water and a nice trail and boardwalk and a lot of people go there. This is an important bird area. The entire refuge is, is designated as an important bird area. It's like Madeira Canyon and so forth and you get a huge diversity of birds. Uh, a lot of activity here. He's checking it out. Well, I've been associated with uh, the Aravaca Watershed Education Task Force for many years and we study the water resource of Aravaca in the basin we live in, which is a kind of isolated um, a little basin from which we all draw our water. And really the entirety of the basin funnels down to this area of the Cienega and creates a beautiful wetland um, with usually a flowing stream through it. And it's uh, a wonderful place with uh, big cottonwoods and wonderful repairing area. Startling things can happen. You can walk around here and see, um, you know, bobcats, mountain lions, uh, javelina, um, really rare birds like gray hawks. You know, all kinds of different things that you really can't see even a mile away. It is a surprising place. I've decided it's a truly wild place due to the fact that the refuge limits how many people can come in. You can see birds, animals, and plants being themselves. They're relatively undisturbed. The canyon is so pristine and biodiverse. We're at the northern edge of a lot of Mexican species also, birds and plants. So you see things in here you don't see in Tucson. This is 20 miles north of the border and um, the ecosystem is significantly different here. You got mountains, you got grasslands, you got the bajadas coming off from the mountains, you got forests like this, the Cienega. And as any ecologist knows, when you have uh, the addition of water, particularly in the desert, you get a massive amount of other things, you know. You get the diversity, you know, both on the flat and in the air. It's amazing to me what lives here and the diversity, how much, how much plant life and animal life is out here and the adaptations they have to survive out here. Just, it never ceases to amaze me. I think of it as a backyard. Um, it's great to have a, a lot of public land around, land that you can just access very quickly and walk around um, and have a real natural experience and, and go for walk for hours, even days. I feel it is a strong privilege to work here as a volunteer. I keep learning, I keep experiencing. I love sharing what I do know with them. The ranching history stories are very interesting. And I always remind them that most of them own this land. This is their land indeed because it's federal land. So I remind them of that and encourage them to appreciate conserving it. And they do, and many come back. <laughs>